Hello and welcome. This is Web222 and I'm David Humphrey and I want to welcome you to the beginning of the course and I'm excited that you're taking the course. I'm excited that you're here. So here you are in a required course. <laughs> you know, you're all uh, signed up to start in on web development and you have to take it. But I'm, uh, I'm really glad to get you started on your journey with web programming and you're, you're starting in on the first of a series of courses that we offer on in our web stream on how to develop for web browsers and web servers and so on. So I, I want to take a few minutes right now and just tell you a little bit about who I am, what the course is, and um, introduce you to what we're going to be doing. So as I say, I'm David Humphrey. I'm Humphrey on Twitter, GitHub, everywhere else on the web. And uh, I've been programming the web since 1995. Uh, maybe a bit earlier, and I've uh, worked with Mozilla for more than 12 years working on Firefox and various web technologies. And so my, my focus, my teaching and research focus is on the open web and on open source. And so I, um, I, I love this course because this is the first chance um, that we have in our program to get people involved in working with HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and really understanding how uh, client-side client-side web programming works. So I'm coming to, to you today from YouTube, and I'm gonna be using this style of giving my lectures for the entire course. The reason I'm gonna do this is that I've talked to a lot of students who tell me about different difficulties they've had trying to uh, just continue their studies. So I, I've talked to people who are in different countries and there's time zone issues people who have little children at home and they're trying their house is um, it's it's not conducive to being able to you know sit and just attend lectures or poor internet or maybe it's their sharing devices and other people need it whatever it is i'm going to record my talks and i'm going to put them on youtube and each week i'll share those links with you so that you can find the time throughout your week to work through these so that's the, that's the way that I'm going to do the lecture component of it. In terms of how we'll do discussions, how you can get help, you know, if you want me to look at your code, if you want to talk to your classmates, I'm going to be using Microsoft Teams. And so we'll do uh, text-based and when necessary, um, audio or screen sharing or video chats to supplement that. So I want to do a mix of these things. And I'm also going to use a lot of the web. So as much as I can, I'm going to try and teach you web development using web development. So I wanted to take a second. I've got the course outline up here, and I wanted to go through the outline and the addendum and just make sure you're clear on a number of things. So the way that this is going to work is that we're going to be doing all of our readings from this site right here, web222.ca, and I'll put the links in uh, the notes for this week. So each week, you're gonna have readings from this site. All the readings are already available. So our, our week one is on internet arch architecture and introduction to JavaScript. And so the notes have been posted and they're ready for you to, to read. So what I'd like you to do each week is begin with these readings. Start out and go through them. Make sure that you're understanding what's in there. And the things that you're not understanding or the topics that you have questions about, things that you wanna go deeper with, I'd like you to, to write those down, and then when we talk to each other throughout the week, you can ask me. We can, we can have a chat, and I can help you understand things that aren't clear, or we can go deeper on something that you found interesting. So we can do that on Teams, or you can email me. So a lot of the weeks are going to also have additional or suggested readings at the top as well as lots and lots of links. Every time I talk about a topic, I'm gonna to link to it and take you to documentation. So when you're going through these, I would highly recommend that you look at these readings. I don't expect that everyone will read all of them, and I'm not gonna test you on absolutely everything that's in the supplemental readings. However, trying to learn how the web works is a, is a very big task. There's so much of it. And so I want to give you access to really good um, materials along the way to help you learn this, th learn this. And some of these are books. So there's a lot, a lot of the books that I'm going to link to are free online materials or they're websites that have, um, that have reference material like the Mozilla Developer Network, etc. 
Okay, so as I say, I'm gonna put up the I'm gonna put up videos each week that will be a lot of demonstrations. I'm gonna write lots of code and show you how I go through and do the things that are talked about in each of the the readings that are, that you have from the week. So we'll we'll do those as well. Um, flipping over to the addendum for a second, I wanted to talk to you about how we're gonna do assessments. So what you're gonna have is you're gonna, throughout the, the term, you're gonna have five assignments to do. The first assignment you're gonna be getting next week. And these will be programming assignments that you're meant to complete. And I wanna emphasize that they're programming assignments that you're meant to complete on your own. So it's really important when you're learning this material, I want you to struggle through it on your own. Now, I know that it's easier to get together with a group of five or six people and everybody puts their ideas in and, they, and you walk away and you all have this piece of code. The problem is that's not gonna work for what we're doing here. I really wanna make sure that you personally understand how to, how to read the documentation, how to debug your code, how to figure out what's going on. So I'm gonna ask that when you work on these assignments that you do them, you do them on your own. And every single one of them is gonna be an individual rather than a group-based assignment. If you're struggling with things in the assignments when you're going through and doing it, you can always reach out to me and you can ask for help. Um, they're not tests. It's not that you can't look things up on the web or you can't ask for help, but I wanna make sure that the code you're handing in and the ideas that you're presenting are your own and that you really do understand what's going on here. So in order to pass the course, you're gonna to have to complete all of the assignments and you're gonna to have to complete them in a satisfactory manner. So in terms of you know, making sure that they're complete and they're done. We're also gonna do tests. So there isn't a midterm and there isn't an exam as such, but there are weekly tests. So the, the first test is gonna begin in week three and every week from that point on, week three, week four, week five, all of them, you're gonna have a test. So these tests are gonna cover the material that we did in the previous week. And when you're studying for a test, what I would recommend that you do is you go back to the week, the notes, and make sure you understand the concepts that are in the notes. So when we do the week three test, we're gonna be covering the material from week two. So this is what you would wanna make sure that you're clear on in terms of what you've studied. So there's gonna be nine of those, and that's worth 50% of your grade, so a good chunk. And in order to pass the course, you need to do 50% or better on these, on these tests. The last thing that we'll have is a final assessment. And what we've been doing with this, in the past we had an exam, but it's been very difficult in the online uh, scenario to do exams, as I'm sure you've experienced already. And so what we've done instead is we've moved to an additional assignment. So this is going to be an assignment topic that is gonna build on work that you've done in previous assignments and it's gonna take it further. Typically, you're gonna to have to research something and um, combine some of your own learning and research with some of the assignment work that you've done in the past, put that all together with a reflection and so on. So all of these things I'll talk about more as we get you know, further on into what we're doing, but that's gonna be the, the rhythm. So when you look at the weekly schedule of what we're gonna be doing each week, Pretty much, once we get going, you're gonna have a test and or an assignment to do. So every week there's a test and probably every other week or so, you're gonna have, every couple of weeks, you're gonna have an assignment that you're gonna to have to submit. So you're always gonna be working on some piece of code. So this, there's lots and lots of code, lots and lots, lots and lots of programming that I'm gonna want you to, to work on throughout this. And the more that you practice this, the more that you engage with it, the better it's gonna be for you, the more you're gonna understand it. So I wanted to say something about this web stream and the design of how we have it, like what we're aiming toward. So you're starting out right now in Web 222. So this is our introductory uh, web programming course. And we also, I pulled up two other websites, Web 322, which is the next one, and Web 422. And I wanted to talk about the flow that we take through these courses so you can understand what it is that you're focused on in this course in order to get where you need to go in the subsequent courses. Okay, so this first course, Web 222, is focused on what it says right here, web programming principles. I want you to leave this course feeling like you have a really solid grasp of JavaScript, HTML, HTML5, and CSS and how all of these things together can be used to do DOM programming, how you 
work with web pages and dynamically alter the way that they work, how you pull data from different services and integrate it and so on. So we start this course backwards from the way that a lot of people would teach web programming. Lots of people would begin with HTML and they would have you build a web page and we're not going to build a web page until week five. I'll probably build some small web pages with you before then just to show you what's going on. But we're going to start out with JavaScript and we do this for the following reason. In our experience, JavaScript is the most difficult of these three for our students to learn. It takes the longest for people to really get comfortable with it. So what we do is we put it first and we give you a chance to practice it. You're going to use JavaScript through the whole course. Every week you're going to use JavaScript. Even when we're doing CSS and HTML, you're still going to need to work with JavaScript. So we wanted to give you as much time as possible to uh, become comfortable with it. We also want to try and build on the knowledge that you're starting to gain working with C and C++, learning about object-oriented programming and so on, because we're going to be using a lot of the same concepts when we're programming in JavaScript. So when you're trying to learn multiple languages at the same time, it can be overwhelming because you have all this competing syntax and so on. So that's the reason that we're putting this early, because trying to jam JavaScript into a couple of weeks at the end of the course wouldn't make sense. So there's another reason. Um, in this course, we are going to spend, as I say, like a month on JavaScript, you know, three or four weeks on uh, HTML and the DOM, three or four weeks on CSS and doing styling of web pages. We're going to talk about user input with forms, working with data, and so on. So everything that we're going to be doing in this course is going to be about the fundamental building blocks of web applications in a web browser. So how do you build web apps? How do you build web pages and documents? What's the difference between a web app and a web document? And what are the programming languages that I need to do this? That's what this course focuses on. In the next course, in 322, you're going to take the knowledge that you gained in 222, and you're going to start moving that onto the server side. So where we're going to focus on client side or programming in a browser in this course, in 322, you're going to start focusing on building web servers and building web services, working with databases and data and web servers and sending back web pages and, and data to clients. So you're going to get a more complete picture. But in this course, you're also going to use JavaScript and you're going to use JavaScript as the server side programming language that you use. In the third course, Web 422, you're going to start programming web apps. And you may already be familiar with terms like React and Angular. You may have heard of people talking about this, or if you've gone looking for jobs, you'll see lots and lots of people talking about building web apps, using tools like React, and so on. And so in the third course in Web 422, we're going to come back to client-side programming, and we're going to teach you how to use modern frameworks in order to build rich, um, apps inside of a web browsing environment. So again, we're going to use JavaScript, we're going to do server-side programming with Node, etc. So the reason I wanted to mention this is because you're going to you're going to be doing three courses in a row, all where you're going to be picking up the ideas that we're going to start out in this course. So this course, Web 222, is about building the fundamentals that you need in order to understand how to do everything that you're going to have to do in these subsequent courses. And once you get past 422, a lot of the professional options will build on this even further. I teach other courses later on which build on these ideas and you can take them a lot further. So we're going to start out with JavaScript because it's going to be with us for a long, long time. And it's a, to be honest with you, it's a fantastic investment. There are so many jobs for people who know how to do web development and JavaScript development. Everything runs JavaScript. JavaScript is absolutely everywhere. And if you learn to do it, program it really, really well, it's going to be a, it's going to be a superpower that you're going to have to be able to do, uh, do web development. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to pause there and I'll do follow up videos with some topics for this week, because what I really want to talk about this week is I want to start talking about internet architectures with a specific bent on, um, how the web works. I want to introduce you to some of that. Uh, I want to talk about development tools, web browsers, um, Node.js. I want to talk about what you need in order to be uh, a productive web developer. And the, the third and final thing I want to do is I want to get you started programming in JavaScript.
So I'll pause this one and we'll pick it up in the subsequent videos.